Andy and I are going to tell you about the work we've been doing in partnership with Illumina to look at constellation map read technology in acute care genomics for unwell, critically unwell children. And this is all part of work, of work we've been able to do within the rare and inherited disease NHS genomic network of excellence. So this is our disclaimers and disclosures. So first I wanted to tell you a little bit about why um, having a rapid genome sequencing service is so important important for critically unwell children. One in 17 of us will get a rare disease at some point in our lifetime, but importantly, 75% of those will have an onset in childhood. And pertinent to this talk, 28% of neonatal intensive care deaths are thought to be due to rare genetic conditions, with 30% of children um, never reaching their fifth birthday. And the UK Rare Disease Framework and the subsequent action plans, including this year's action plan, have as their first priority helping patients to get a, di a final diagnosis faster. Never is that more important than in critically unwell children. So the Exeter Laboratory has a long history of moving and rapidly moving and translating research discoveries into new diagnostic testing and continuing to in innovate in the NHS diagnostic space. Starting back in 2010, when research exome sequencing was used for disease gene discovery by the genomic research groups here in Exeter, to the launch of an, the first um, NHS trio exome test for children in 2013, followed by the very first um, test to be launched as part of the new genomic medicine service in 2019, the first time rapid sequencing was available for acutely unwell children via exomes. And then in 2022, we, to, get, to gain the additional diagnostic potential, we moved from exome to genome sequencing. And that innovation continues, including with work like the work we're describing today um, uh, with Illumina. So just to tell you a little bit about the Rapid Genome Sequencing Service for Acutely Unwell Children, Exeter is the national provider in England, and NHS England funds 1,200 rapid genome sequencing tests per year. That means 1,200 children are able to be tested through this service. And um, the, the turnaround time is less than 10 days from samples to receipt. That's in comparison to a, a three-month or more turnaround time for standard exome sequencing. And we do what's called trio exome sequencing, which I'll tell you a little bit more about in a moment. But essentially, we have samples from both um, unaffected parents and the affected child. And since the service was launched, more than 5,000 children and families have benefited from the service. The diagnostic yields is 43%, um, and, and importantly, 90% of the referrals are, are these parent-child trios. But in 10% of cases, uh, either one or both parent samples are not available for testing. And you can see here from this um, word, this, um, the words in this circle here, the, the commonest genes in which diagnoses have been identified with the larger, the larger gene names indicating the most common genes in which diagnoses have been identified through the service. So working with Illumina and, and exploring the potential for their constellation read technology for rare disease diagnostics, our priority was for children who are critically unwell, but also for all of the patients with rare genetic conditions that are tested either um, through the Exeter Laboratory or ac across England as part of the NHS and indeed globally. So we had three particular use cases that we thought were important to explore, one being um, being able to characterize and determine the pathogenicity of structural variants because that's so difficult to do from short read sequencing. Um, trying to get closer to that gene agnostic approach that we're able to offer to in um, for children who have one or both uh, who have both parent samples available and we can do that by being able to phase variants um, uh, using the Illumina um, constellation technology and Andy will tell you about that further. So in children um, with the sorts of diagnoses that Ruben had where both parent samples are available, uh, this new technology allows us to essentially replicate what we can do with both parent samples uh, as we were able to do in Ruben's case. And then um, it, it, in some cases, the sorts of um, families that might come to see me in clinic might be where um, 
there is only one parent, uh, they're with a new partner, and they want to know about the recurrence risk of a genetic condition. Um, and, and here we're talking about um, autosomal dominant de novo genetic conditions. Um, and Illumina um, Constellation Read Technology provides us with an opportunity to be able to provide some information about recurrence risks in some of these cases, which Andy will again tell you a little bit more about. But here you can see us um, and the Illumina site at Cambridge uh, getting involved and learning um, how this works and, and how, um, how the technical elements of Illumina Constellation Read Technology plays out. So I'll hand over to Andy. Thanks. So, as Emma said, there are a number of important limitations that we have when we're trying to use short read sequencing in the context of testing a singleton. And one of the main difficulties is in the phasing of variants in recessive conditions. So we can see from this slide, which shows the ABCC8 gene, which causes autosomal recessive hyperinsulinism, that the constellation read technology can help address this for us. The gene here is 88 kilobases across, and using the um, constellation technology, we've got a single phase block that covers the entirety of the gene. What that allows us to do is to very easily assign the two identified variants, in this case, two nonsense variants, which are 36 kilobases apart, to separate haplotypes, demonstrating that they're in trans, and thus confirming a diagnosis of autosomal recessive HI due to variants in the ABCC8 gene. If we move on to the next slide, we know, sadly, that in the clinical setting, we unfortunately don't always have good quality high molecular weight DNA on which to undertake testing. And we're often called to do this on older samples where it's not possible to obtain fresh material. This can sometimes be from deceased patients, and it's important to um, test these samples in order to inform the management of family members. These samples can be highly fragmented, presenting a challenge to long read sequencing technologies. Um, and we asked the Constellation team um, to have a go with this 14-year-old highly fragmented sample, which you can see from the QC graph in the top right of this slide, is quite degraded. And we see the results from this were actually really promising. While the gene was not fully encompassed in a single phase block, on the next side you can see that we did have a large phase block that covered the entirety, uh, the entirety of one region of this gene um, and identified that the two variants, which were 35 kilobase pass, uh, bases apart in this um, sample, were in a large phase block and allowed us to confirm that they're also in, in trans and thus the, the diagnosis. If we move on to the next slide, we can see there are also um, useful opportunities to identify when two variants are not in trans, which is what we're showing here. In this case, the proximity information has allowed us to phase the hemizygous reads, which are present in this 110 kilobase pair deletion, and show that it's in cis with the SNV that we're seeing on the left-hand side of the screen. In this case, that would let us ex exclude um, this as a, a cause of the condition. In a number of conditions, it's important to understand the parental chromosome on which de novo variants have arisen, as is the case with this um, MAGL2 variant we're showing here. MAGL2 variants cause a maternally imprinted Prada Willy like condition, so we need to confirm that variants have arisen on the paternal allele to assign pathogenicity. And if we can uh, skip to the next slide, what you can see is a representation of the 2,600 informative variants um, that we've identified through Constellation Read technology in this trio. Informative variants here are those that were heterozygous in the proband and only present in one parent. Now, these variants created a 1.6 megabase um, pair phased haplotype block around our variant of interest when we compare the proband, mum, and dad sample. And what we've done here is artificially colored the haplotypes. So you can see that the variant that we're interested in, the de novo CTT in the middle of the screen, has arisen on the dark green haplotype in the proband, which has come from the father, allowing us to confirm a diagnosis in this case. It's also important to note that none of the variants which were used to create this haplotype block were inside the MAGL2 gene, highlighting the importance of the really large um, haplotype blocks that are being created by Constellation Read technology. If we skip to the next slide. Determining the parental chromosome um, for de novo variants is also important in autosomal dominant conditions where we only have one parent available and can, as Emma mentioned earlier, help inform the recurrence risk for that parent if, for example, they have a new partner. 
Here we're simulating this scenario with the mother and child from the, the example on the previous slide. When considering this duo, there were 457 informative variants, and here we mean those heterozygous in the proband and homozygous in the parent. We were able to create a 1.86 megabase pair phased haplotype block, which allows us to demonstrate that the variant has not arisen on the maternal haplotype, thus reducing her recurrence risk with a new partner to that of the population. Next slide, please. To date, we've run 41 samples across 28 cases that are known to be clinically challenging through the Constellation Re technology working with the Illumina team. Together, we've demonstrated genome-wide phasing, including from archival DNA quality samples, and have successfully identified a range of variant types that allow us to address unmet clinical needs, uh, needs sorry, when this goes live. We're looking forward to continuing our collaboration with Illumina and which to thank the entire team, but in particular, Sean Humphrey and the R&D team who have been pushing all of these samples through um, the, the machines in Cambridge for us. So what are the current challenges for rap in rapid genomics for critically unwell children? Well, we're always striving to make diag more diagnoses, and we ex showed you earlier that our current diagnostic yield is somewhere around 43%. Uh, we want to find those diagnoses for those children in, in which we haven't to date, and we want to do that faster. So we're always looking to shave hours and days off of the turnaround time so that we can make the biggest difference to these children. And that's becoming more and more important as more treatments become available for rare genetic conditions and there's more, more clinical trials and increased access to clinical trials. But really importantly, what we've told you to, about today is about trying to provide that equity of access for children where they're one or other parents or both parent samples are not available for testing. And Constellation Read technology provides us with that opportunity to get closer to that gene agnostic approach that we described that we're able to do, testing those 22,000 genes in, in those trio samples by using that phasing information. And on top of that, we have the opportunity to be able to look at more those more complex areas of the genomes and more complex variant types like structural variants. We are able to provide information about pathogenicity when only one parent sample is available when looking at imprinted genes. We can determine which, um, uh, on which parent's allele the variant occurred, and we can provide that recurrence, um, that recurrence risk information for parents when they have a new partner. And we're incredibly grateful to the Illumina team, as Andy mentioned, for their um, continued working with us to look at the geno at genome data using Constellation Read technology and, and strive to, towards these goals. So it's Andy's and my privilege to talk about this with you today and to talk about the amazing work done by the Exeter Laboratory. But there are many clinical scientists, bioinformaticians, technologists and members of the administrative team in the Exeter Laboratory that work hard every day to be able to provide this service for patients. And you can see here how uh, valuable this service is, is seen to be by the clinicians that use it.